ATC, what does work? When to use caution? How you can use it? Ten minutes. Um, can you take this stupid thing away here? Yeah. Um, what does it mean? It's called ATC because it means anatomical, therapeutic, chemical classification. It's 50 years old. Actually, it was started by somebody working in IMS, um, the company that I started working with before it was renamed into IQVIA. Um, been very um, successful, very mature, uh, used all over the world. Okay. Um, it is a. It is a stratified um, hierarchy. So you have the anatomic first level is anatomical, for example, drugs for dermato for, for the skin, dermatologicals. Second is therapeutic, antibiotics or chemotherapeutics. Third level could be also therapeutic or pharmacological. In this case, it's therapeutic. Fourth level is any of the three. No, they ran out of other useful categorizations in this particular example. Um, and the fifth one is the chemical substance. So in other case, metronidazole. Okay, that's an antibiotic which you can take, but it doesn't get in um, ingested into the bloodstream if you take it orally. So and in metro in uh, Rx norm, you have that same ingredient, metronidazole, metronidazole. And then you go down if the hierarchy, and there are all sorts of uh, products: uh, Noritate, uh, metronidazole cream, ten percent. Okay. So this just um, any good um, drug classification that you would expect. That's how it works. You can use the concept ancestor. So here are the descendants. Here are the ancestors. You can uh, stratify by the concept class um, uh, ID, which is not this, it's this, ATC1, ATC2, ATC3, and so on. And it'll work. You can find the metronidazole in dermatologicals and the other way around. You can use the concept relationships. These guys are linked with the ISA connector. Um, between ATC5 and RX norm, um, there's their special. Um, uh, connectors and um, and of course you know you can get from the ingredient to the product usually takes you a couple of uh, couple of jumps that's it you're done 10 minutes up um, no you're not it that would be nice right you have um, a, a drug ingredients and you have a drug class and it all works and uh, you can just rely on it blindly but you can't. There are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when you use ATC, and ATC is our main drug classification system, so everybody uses it, and it's used internationally widely. All right, metronidazole and the four ATC strata on top of it um, exists more than once. Here are, usually I don't show this in this tutorial, but here are the uh, ATC codes. So they're all different. So metronidazole has, is there five times. What's the difference? Well, they're actually different uh, classes. Okay, so this is uh, anti, um, um, they're not bacterial um, um, microorganisms. Uh, it works against those very well. Um, <clears throat> It can be used um, in a systemic way. You have to then um, give it parenterally. Um, it can be used um, uh, as local in uh, as a, um, a vaginal creams, and you can use it in order to eradicate all sorts of nasty bacteria in the intestinal tract. Tract. Why is that so? Well, because they're different anatomics and also different pharmacological uh, um, forms, which make this thing happen more than once in the in, in, in ATC. Not so bad, a hierarchy can have more than one parent, right? So there's one Rx norm ingredient, metronidazole, but there are a whole bunch of them in ATC, 
kind of like, you know, you have more than one parent, you have five parents. All we can deal with that all good. If you're doing it, if you're rolling up uh, in a co-medication, of course you get you get an over um, a reporting, but other than that, we know how to deal with that. Well, it exists in combinations, fixed combinations. Okay, vonoprazan, amoxicillin, and metronidazole. You see, there are lots of them, and they have different classes. Um, in uh, uh, if you go up the hierarchy. They exist in fixed combination inside a class, so better methazone and anti-infectives. This anti-infectives, this can be uh, can be metronidazole on a, or a different anti-infective, okay? But there are ATC classes which have metronidazole containing drugs in them and they can be hidden in this particular way. So there is a, 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 a an, an ingredient, different one in combination with metronidazole as member of a class. Gets worse, lazonoprazole combinations. You no, know, you don't even know it's an anti-infective. Can be anything. Okay. And finally, I love these anti-infectives combinations. This is an ATC5 class. So if somebody tells you ATC5, they are ingredients. They're not ingredients. Sometimes they are classes. And um, ATC5 does not tell you what actually is in there. Well, it tells you. It's just a whole bunch of different things. OK, so that's uh, problem number one. Problem number two, we, it's actually not a problem. It's a solution, except you need to know this. We solved the problem of having a lot more than one. In fact, there are 51 metronidazole classes in ATC that can contain it. And so, but we only have one metronidazole ingredient. Just look at my answer. Metronidazole ingredient. Okay. How do you do? How do you make sure that this AT3 class doesn't inherit everything in the grandmother that contains metronidazole? Because the hierarchy concept ancestry is no longer a uh, symmetrical. So it goes like this and then it splits up again. So if you look down from this guy here, you will get the ingredient, but then you jump in this direction. The children, you, you don't see the children other than the ones that belong to this one. Same is true for here. And this works for all of the 51 and it works all across ATC. So don't be surprised if you do step by step and think, oh, I can do ancestor myself by just doing one step and the next step. You don't know anymore that if you uh, descend from this step, you have to go this direction and not that direction. So rely, please rely on the concept ancestor table. It will do that right. You can map from ATC. Why is that important? Because many drug uh, um, uh, data, source data, use ATC as a drug coding system, even though there's all this ambiguity, ambiguity that I showed you. But, it, we, but we have it still. So you can use metronidazole, local oral, that's an ATC5, and it'll maps to metronidazole, okay? If it's hidden in these combinations, it will not map to metronidazole. This one will map to better metazole, because that's what, why that's explicitly mentioned. This guy here, Nothing is mentioned, which means it maps to nothing because it can map to a whole lot of things. So we don't know which one it maps to. So when you ETL and you have one of these ambig ambiguous ones, can't just blindly uh, throw the maps to table at it or source to concept map table at it. You have to figure out what the, somehow else figure out what actually is it that's being uh, uh, given. It has holes. It has holes. I'm saying it again. It has holes. There are 600 ATCs that have no Rx norm underneath them. That's 13 percent. What is this stuff? Usually old medication that doesn't isn't used anymore. Um, but it, but there are 13 percent of them. The other way around is much worse. So if you think you have Rx norm and you just roll up in order to make a report, you're going to miss a ton. 74% have no ATC. 
74% of RxNorm, by the way, RxNorm and RxNorm extension, of course, ingredient have no ATC. How is that possible? It's possible because ATC works um, um, passively. So the pharma companies actually have to submit to ATC saying, hey, I have a drug, please put it in ATC. If they don't do it, doesn't happen. But again, but this sounds worse than it is because the 74, most of them are all sorts of funny extracts and, and root tinctures and, and those kind of things, okay? So your normal standard drugs that we tend to, to uh, um, research in Odyssey, they are nicely covered by ATC. So the 74 is all the like all sorts of uh, allergenic extracts and all, all these kind of things. They don't have ATC. So ATC is only proper chemicals, okay? And by the way, the ingredients, it's worse than in drugs because there are a lot of ingredients in RxNorm, RxDorm extension, which actually have no drug either. They just got in there somehow, also historically, but there's actually no product. So only 37% of the drugs have no ATC. But still, you have to remember when you roll up into ATC, you're gonna miss things. And you're going to have to remember, if you roll up into ATC, you're going to double count. Okay, so make sure that you, in your statistics, this is taken care of. That's it. Metronidazole is more than once in ATC. 35 out of 51 ATC concepts, the word metronidazole isn't even mentioned, but it's still in there. Don't forget that. There are these combinations and anti-infectives and other drug type things. We built a hierarchy to take care of these, of this situation, so it's asymmetrical. The child of your child is not automatically your grandchild. Could be somebody else's grandchild. ADC5s are mapped to ingredients, but only if they are unambiguous. But if they're ambiguous, if they're unambiguous, then they, they're well mapped. And ADC has holes, doesn't cover the whole, um, drug space that actually is contained in the data. Thank you.